Hey guys, it's Christine Bertram, and I'm coming to you live on a Tuesday for Tip Tuesday. It is a little after five, and I thought I'd pop on quick <laughs> before date night starts. I always, you guys, if you don't know me, you're getting to know me. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a procrastinator. That is my nature. Uh, so I will put something off until it has to be done. So it's like a, more of a just-in-time kind of person. So... That's why I've been getting these Tip Tuesdays to you live instead of pre-recorded like I used to be. So, I have um, had a suggestion from Judy Immel. Uh, she said, you should talk more about using a ruler. <laughs> this came out of a conversation I think we had after we had the winner of Creative Escape a couple weeks ago. And... I gotta turn the volume down and <laughs> so hi Holly. So Judy said that I should remind people or go over using a ruler. Hi Frankie Canada. Hi Sandy Z Dune. <clears throat> There's Carla Lake. So I got about 20 minutes <laughs> and then I told her I would be done by 5.30 and we're meeting my parents for dinner. Hi Sue Thomas. And so Judy wanted me to talk about a ruler. Um, because not everybody knows how rulers work. And you would, I think that I, I look at a ruler all the time and I get it. I, 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 and there's nothing wrong if you don't know how to read a ruler. So I'm not trying to call anybody out. Um, hi, Stacey Burns. But, hi, Tammy King. But what, hi, Sherry Martin. What, um, what Judy said is that it might be a good reminder to show people that may have forgotten or to show people that might not know it at all about how a ruler works and like what inches mean and quarter inches. Hi, Julie Frost. Hi, Mary Ellen. Hi, Patricia. Quarter inches, eighth inches, 16th inches, 30 seconds. <laughs> I never work in 30 seconds, you guys. That's too crazy. So, so inches, and we, we're, um, it, not the, so like we're, we operate off of, um, oh my gosh. I was going to say metric, but we're not metric. So we're whatever we are. <laughs> you guys, somebody say it in the, the live. My, <laughs> I'm having a brain fart. Hi, Janet Flanagan. Uh, so <clears throat> we have inches and um, like there's 12 inches in a foot. And um, when you're doing card mats and card bases, it's really important to know. Hi, Carissa. Um, it's really important to know your mats for your sizes for your mats. And that's how reading a ruler will really help. Hi, Nancy. And so I do have my steel rules down here and I'm going to show you uh, how they work. Um, and uh, so, <laughs> yes, I'm live for a, a hot second here, guys. <laughs> Imperial. Yes, that's probably right, Patricia. So, <laughs> so you guys, and it's, I know it's a little shiny, but I have my ruler here. I'll pull this out, this guy out from time to time, but, um, it has, let's see if I can get the ruler up here to even show you guys there one inch. Okay. So you see one inch is like right here. And then there's all these teeny tiny little baby lines. Um, and what they designate, and I'm gonna try to maybe show it on this one because I like to use this one a lot. You guys will see me pull this one a lot. Hi, Judy Bobo. Okay, so, and the lighting is gonna not make it so easy to show you this, but you have one inch, two inch, three inch. You guys got the inches. You guys probably even get quarter inches very good. You know, so like quarter, quarter, four go into one. So a quarter inch is like two of those marks, okay? And then on the other side here, they have that even broken down further. So um, so how it works, and it's not gonna work so good to keep showing you the ruler, but in an inch, you have four quarters. And then in a quarter, you have two more. So that makes eighths. So like there's eight eighths in an inch. Um, and I, work in 16th a lot and I hi Kathy King hi Robin <clears throat> and I I know that a lot of people don't like to work in 16th but with this tip Tuesday I want to show you why I do 16th of an inch um so so when you take that eighth and divide it in a half again so then you get the 16th and so there are what 16 16ths in an inch I never go below the 16th but if you would take 16th and divide it in half again you get 30 seconds right and so a lot of the matting that I do is, <laughs> Judy's got the same ruler. So a lot of the matting I do is more like quarter inch, eighth inch, 16th inch, never more than that. Um, Sandy Wicklander shared this with me a while back. And if you guys wanna take a, a screenshot of this, you can. So like a, a traditional card base is five and a half 
by four and a quarter, right? That's a quarter sheet of paper. And so this is breaking it down. Hi, Carol Jefferson. This is breaking it down by quarter inches, like, <clears throat> excuse me, five and a quarter minus a quarter is five, minus a quarter is four and three quarter, minus a half is a quarter, you know? So, and then the other side, it's four, three and three quarters. It's a quarter off. Each one of these is a quarter less, right? Which gives you that eighth inch margin all around. Okay, so that's one type of matting. And so let's show an example of that. So I'm just gonna grab some copy paper here, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm gonna cut it in half. Whoops, not score it, but I'm gonna cut it in half. So traditionally, when you guys make a card base per that matting, and this is considered an A2 size card, right? So you have four and a quarter by five and a half, right? So let's get a little marker. So this is five and a half by four and a quarter. And so when you do your matting, this suggests you take a quarter off each one. So let's do that on a white piece of paper so you guys can see what that does. So <clears throat> when I cut this, I cut it at five and a quarter on this long side. Um, <clears throat> I never would cut five and a quarter here because then you're only getting two mats out of that sheet. You wanna make sure you cut that five and a quarter Hi, Denise. Hi, Marsha Long. So you want to make that five and a quarter and then the four here because then that ultimately will give you four mats out of a regular size sheet of paper. So when you did this five and a quarter by four, what happens is you get an eighth of an inch mat all the way around the edge. This is what I would consider for myself the most traditional type of mat. If you look at this card, eighth inch all the way around. You look at this card, eight, uh, eighth inch all the way around. <clears throat> this one, eighth inch all the way around. I primarily start my mats at five and a quarter by four. You guys, I mean, every card that I'm pulling out here is like that. Okay, well, then we get to this one and I went with a bigger size mat. So because uh, of how the inside worked. So now if you would want to go the next size on here, you would do five by three and three quarters. So let's do the three and three quarters by five. So what this is doing, <clears throat> it's giving us an eighth of an inch, again, around this. So you've got that eighth inch of a white border, and now you've got an eighth inch of the purple border, right? So and it's gonna continue giving you that eighth inch. When you take a quarter off, aloha. <laughs> when you take a quarter off of two sides, a quarter inch off of two sides, hi Bonnie Kelly, you get that eighth inch all the way around. So if I would continue, it would keep shrinking and shrinking and shrinking until you have a small little section. Now, when you work in 16th of an inch or eighth of an inch, that's where, so I used to do my mat sometimes an eighth of an inch. So. What would happen is, instead of five and a quarter, if you did five and three eighths by four and an eighth, so let's do four and an eighth, just to show you a difference, four and an eighth by five and three eighths. That's only cutting off an eighth of an inch on two sides. What happens then is it gives you a lot smaller of a border of that purple underneath. Do you see that? There's hardly anything. Hi, um, Karen from Seymour. I think you mean Indiana. <laughs> so, um, Sue Thomas, I'm not sure what you mean by eighth or a quarter. So, um, when I cut off an eighth inch, so this is now, this white piece was four and an eighth by five and three eighths. It leaves me only with, hi, Sue Somerville, it only leaves me with a sixteenth all the way around. And when I had classes with Naughty Nancy about three or four years ago, she would hate it when I would do this to her. And I figured if she didn't like it, others wouldn't like it because it really doesn't give you a lot of wiggle room with gluing your mat down. If you glue it crooked, you you're you're you almost lost your whole mat. Um, so so that you can't do eighth inch mat. So let's keep going that route. So it was five and an eighth. Nope, five and three eighths by four and an eighth. So let's do our next one at um, five and an eighth by three and seven eighths, okay? So again, I'm only cutting off a little bit. And again, you can see, 
Oh, I did it normal. Ha <laughs> ha. I cut off a quarter inch, I bet. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> so I was going to say, I cut a quarter inch off of each side, and that's the kind of mat I like, you know, an eighth inch all the way around. Okay. So I don't generally do an eighth inch border all the way around. That's too little. So, so you, you would, you have your, your card base here is that five and a half by four and a quarter. You can work your way down by quarters of an inch. You can work your way by eighth of an inch, but the next one is the 16th of an inch. And if you guys have been following me for a while, You'll know I love to do a traditional mat here. This first one was five and a quarter by four. But then the next one, instead of cutting off another quarter inch, I do just a little bit less so I see less of that white border there. And that's where the 16th come in. So this next mat, what I would do is I would operate with my purple paper here. And so if this was five and a quarter. So five and a quarter minus three sixteenths. So this little, here, it's easier to see on here actually, you guys. So you have your inch mark here, and then you can see the longer lines are your quarter inches. And then you can see the next shorter line is the eighth. And then the shortest line is a sixteenth. And these little, little, eensy, teensy little baby ones up here are 30 seconds. Okay, I never look at them. I, nope, those are metric. Ha, ha, ha. I am guessing that those are metric. They don't even have 30 seconds on here. But I operate on that shortest line quite a bit. Okay. Hello, Jeanne from sunny Oregon. <laughs> Thanks for saying that. I knew that when I, before I even saw it. So what I will do is, at that five and a quarter, what I will do is take off three sixteenths. So five and a quarter minus three of those little lines gives me five and one sixteenth. Okay. And then you're at four, four minus three. So one, two, three. So that's three sixteenths. So basically what I'm doing is I am seeing less of the white margin compared to this other mat that I had right here, I think. Okay. So I like that because it gives more focal image on the other part here. Um, that's what I did on this one. So the peach or that pale papaya was the four by five and a quarter, but then this designer paper was cut at five and one sixteenth. Okay, so there's probably, let's see if I have an example. I do that here. This is another example of me doing that. So this card right here, the gray is... It, you would have seen more of the gray had I cut a whole quarter inch off versus the three sixteenths. Hi, Sarah. So, and then we did the same thing here. We we kept it so that it's a little bit less. Um, this is an example of where you would have a quarter inch margin. You see that the black is a little bit thicker. So it all comes down to like looking at the ruler and understanding your quarter inches. And I, I, I had a stamp a stack back in, what was it? November. And I cut my cards and mats using sixteenths of an inch and people had a really hard time doing that. Well, first of all, it's probably really hard to read these little tick marks a lot. But um, the other thing too, like you saw on this card, I left a really big margin around the edge. And so when you look at that kind of a margin, that's a full quarter inch. So what I did for that margin is I cut a half inch off. So it so you start at five and a half by four and a quarter. So you take a half by inch off. So then you go five by three and three quarters. So that's what this mat is. This guy's a little you know handy tool to have next to you. Um, and I will intermingle stuff. So if I have my traditional mat here, and then let's say I do that mat, my next one, I might go back and bring it into taking a whole quarter inch off the next one. So... Um, Let's see if I can confuse you guys a little bit. So, <laughs> so like this was five and one sixteenth. So if I take off a full quarter inch, that brings me down to four and three sixteenths. So that's my quarter inch. And then if I was at three and 13 sixteenths, if I come back a full quarter inch, quarter inch, that would put me at the nine sixteenths. And so now what I'm doing is bringing back a little bit thicker of a margin on my mat. So I guess... 
You know, you guys can be creative. Hi, Deanne, from snowy and very cold West Michigan. So you can see here, I created a little bit thicker of a border on there again. So the white was thinner, purple was bigger, and the, now the purples matched and the whites were smaller. So you guys can play around with the your mats. Um, you don't have to always keep it to a certain one. Unless you're comfortable, if that's what makes it work for you guys to cut paper and make cards, <laughs> do what works for you. It's all good. But when you want to start experimenting, don't experiment with your card stock or your designer series paper because you will be sad when you cut it the wrong way. So what I'm doing too, when I'm working with a fun fold or a card for the first time and I don't know exactly how the layout's going to work, I won't... Um, I won't cut my cardstock or designer paper right away. I will pull out this copy paper, which I could care less about because <laughs> it's it's like thin paper for your printer, right? Um, I don't mind chopping that up and experimenting and playing around with it till I get it just right. Uh, and then you don't feel so bad when you cut up your more expensive cardstock and designer paper. Um, <laughs> so I have, Marsha, I think you said that you have already, I have already confused you guys. So um, I didn't mean for this one to confuse you guys. Um, I guess when Judy said, hey, we have a hard time reading rulers or we have a hard time with measurements, I looked at it like, okay, well, maybe let's sit back and like look at what a ruler entails. Um, because I do find that I operate in the 16s a lot and a lot of people that might be intimidating and scary. So um, so Judy said it might be nice to have the chart for the ones, the 16 inch, then we can cut out each panel and have them ready to play. Yeah, so... When I have a hot second, you guys, I will, um, this is the, the, the quarter inch matting. What really could be nice is to have the five and let's say three eighths by four and an eighth and having it start there and going all the way down so you know. And then, hi, Christine from Australia on Australia Day. Woohoo! <laughs> hi, hi, Wendy. Um, and then what I can do is take another one that starts at like, let's say five and five sixteenths, and then what the four inch would be, and then break it down. So then there's three columns. And then you guys can intermingle and match and know that the proportions will always be the same. So um, yes, it's hard um, with measures. Yeah. You know, some people do. Some people have a hard, hard time with numbers. Um, and I know a lot of I don't know a lot of people, but I know enough people that have dyslexia. And so they will read things backwards. And so it's very, very hard for them, more so than anybody, to read a ruler. So um, just don't let it discourage you or um, don't struggle with it too much. Um, what I can do is when I create this, I have in the Cards by Crispy website, what I have is um, a newsletter section there. And I can store PDF documents there. And when I have it made, I will put it in there and then I'll send a note out saying that it's in there or I'll announce it. Um, Deanne says she puts dots on her trimmer. That helps too, especially when you use that number a lot. And if your eyesight is starting to go or it's harder to read it or you need readers, um, having a little mark there would definitely help so that your eye is drawn to that mark instead of having to squint and look for it. So, um, I hope that helped a little bit. <laughs> I definitely filled up my time. <laughs> um, I did hear Tyler come home. And so uh, I think he's getting changed and we're going to head out. So tomorrow, you guys, I do still plan to go live over my lunch hour. So sometime between the, let's say, 1130 and 130 window. <laughs> and it might even be closer to 1230 because um, just because of that's how I go. <laughs> I, I always leave work at the last possible minute. So I will be live tomorrow over the lunch hour, my lunch hour, um, to showcase all the February cards, except for one class. I did not have the ability or time to make the hand penned ink, paper, scissors, which are towards the end of the month. But I do have the other four classes, ooh, five classes set for, for February. So I'm going to do a live showcasing all those cards and that'll be the video then that the VIP group can share. So, uh, and then tomorrow night I will be live with the sweet talk class and I do have kits left for that in case anybody's interested. Um, I'll pop down really quick because I could still mail these out tomorrow to you. Um, I know you wouldn't get them in time for class. <laughs> I flipped that around. So, but these are the cards we're going to be making tomorrow night. So you can see, um, this is another example where I did a four by five and a quarter, and then I cut off my three sixteenths off of the both sides, and then that's the other card. So, um, so yes, if anybody's interested in those card kits, I still have them, and then 
I will be rolling through everything coming up for February tomorrow, and then I leave on Thursday. Woohoo! I still have to pack, in case you were wondering. I have not even thought that far ahead. <laughs> but we have to be at the airport at 6 a.m. on Thursday morning. <laughs> I will have a suitcase with some clothes in it. I am sure I will. <laughs> and I heard it's like 60 degrees, going to be in the 50s, and so I am not so sure about wearing a swimming suit. Oh, that sounds cold to me. So, Hi, Elaine Reback. Um, Elaine, I got your uh, order that was in my little mailbox on the counter. So I will get that order in for you tomorrow. So you guys, all right, well, have a safe and enjoyable and um, warm rest of your evening on a Tuesday. Uh, lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you. And if you have any other tips for using a ruler or reading a ruler, you guys are welcome to add them into the comments. And then also, if you have a direct question for me, please reach out to me like personally or tag me in the post so that my notifications tell me that. Otherwise, texting, Facebook messaging, or um, emails are perfect. So, all right, we'll see you guys later. Love ya.